and today I'll be showing you how to make a Deadpool sword. The very same sword that Deadpool uses in the Deadpool game. So this sword is about 36 inches long and 8.5 ounces. I did fail to time myself, but I do know that the build will run you about $55 for one sword, and only an additional $8 if you want to dual wield like a boss. I did create a link in the description box below which contains everything I used in terms of supplies, tools, and even measurements. So check that out while you watch the rest of my video. And let's start step one. This is where you measure and mark your cut lines. Use that uh, fancy blueprint I made you guys to uh, get all the measurements you need. Um, but the only thing I didn't include was the measurements for the PVC pipe because you're simply just marking 10 inches from one side. And that's that. And on to step two. This is where you're going to take your saw and we can see you saw or for now you can see me saw. And oh yeah, when you get to the handle, this is when you bust out your chisel and hammer and just uh, kind of make those corners look a little better. That's pretty easy to do. Then you end up with something looking like this, which is cool, but not Deadpool cool yet. And don't forget about that PVC pipe. It's just one simple cut and you got yourself a smoother handle. As for step numero tres, this is where we draw in our detail lines using more of those measurements I gave you. And yeah, I know there's a lot going on in one spot, and that's why I made a close-up. Bam! In your face. And But I did forget to mention that we're drawing a center line down three of the sides, and you want the sword to look sharp, don't you? I mean, it's not a bat. I mean, and then you just continue drawing those same detail lines on the other side of the sword. Here is where we focus on them 9 inches. I mean, I don't really know what else to call it. I mean, it's literally 9 inches long. But anyways, this is uh, where we chisel a chunk of it out and make it look like this. And how we do that is we take our X-Acto knife and uh, metal ruler, and we just score a line down the center of it um, on both sides, of course. Then you can bust out your chisel and hammer all over again and start chiseling away from the outside line towards the middle at whatever angle you think is cool. I didn't exactly measure it, but I mean, whatever. I wasn't that picky. What we're going to do here is take the handle part and sand all four of the corners down so that we can shove it into our PVC pipe. Pro tip! Remember that four inches of wood you cut off the end of your stick? You could use that as a sanding block if you don't have one. So use your pretend sanding block, or your real one if you actually have one, and start sanding those corners down just enough so that it barely fits in the PVC pipe. You want a tight fit so that it doesn't come sliding off when you're slashing through the air. Then you're just going to bring the hammer down until the end of the PVC is snug up against the start of the blade. And then it'll look a little something like so. For step six, we're going to take our sanding block and make our block of wood look like an actual sharp bladed edge. And to do that, we are going to sand down the corners until the sanding block meets both this line and that line. And by the time you're done with that, it should look a little something like this. And also, once you get to the corners of the blade, you'll want to make your life a lot easier by using a hammer and chisel. So that it could look a lot more sharp and defined. Sanding your sword is going to be the longest step of all the steps given. And it can get really boring. And I mean really boring. So you might as well try to have some fun with it. You can cool down a bit by sanding in the grass. Or bring out your inner ninja monkey and sand in the trees. Or multitask by sanding on the longboard. Doing yoga. Sanding in a sombrero. Or even while pretending to draw your sword for battle. After all, who wants to sit there and just rub their wood all day? But anyways, here's how sexy your sword should look after all that sanding. But just when you thought you were done, nah, you still got the cap. You gotta sand it all down until it's all uniform and smooth. 
For step seven, we can lay some newspapers down, protect the floor, you know, need that protection. And we can start adding color to our sword and spray the blade, the whole blade, and the tip of the handle for the secret compartment. I did about three coats, waited about 10 minutes in between, and 30 minutes before going to the next step. And that next step just so happens to be taping off the parts you want to keep black. And the parts you want to keep silver are pretty much the pointy, sharp parts, you know, the ones that we sanded down for days. And also that little detail in the middle. Once you're done with all that, it should look like this. And ready for the next step. I did about four coats of the metallic silver, just because it took a little while to cover up the black. And once you're done with that, you can tear off all the tape and um, spray the clear coat, which is completely optional, and I did forget to record it, but oh wells. If you bought the same foam sheet as I did from Michaels, then you'll have more than enough material for both swords, so I'm going to use my scraps from the last one. And for this step, we're just going to use those measurements I gave you to cut out the appropriate sizes for both layer 1 and 2 for your sword. And as for layer 2, I do recommend only drawing in your measurement lines and not cutting all the cut marks yet because it'll just make things a lot easier for you to wrap them like you will be doing in the next step. Now before you start going ham with the spray adhesive, I do recommend taping off the sword that you don't want spray adhesive on because it looks tacky and it actually really just gets tacky and I don't like that so I tape it off just to keep it protected and then you can just wrap both layers on one at a time and then we can proceed with the next step on to step 12 this is where we use our exacto knife and finally make those cuts that we made for on layer 2 and just you know lightly tear it off it peels pretty easily and if it does mess up your first layer that's fine because we're going to be covering this up but once you're done cutting all these out it shall look beautiful just like this for step 13 we're going to use our cutting mat to help us measure four and a half by nine and a half inches and we're going to use this fabric to wrap around our handle so to have a cleaner look you're going to fold over either long edge of the fabric and just sew that down. And I used red um, string, but you could use black. I just thought the red will give it a cool little accent. Now you're going to take your fabric and some spray adhesive and simply just wrap the fabric around the handle fairly tightly, and you want to avoid any wrinkles just so it looks better. It makes it look a lot better actually. And once you're done with that, you can use your little rotary cutter and cut off any excess fabric and then remove all that orange tape. After all that wrapping, what you're going to do is roll on all your o-ring seals and then color them with the silver sharpie one at a time so you get in between the rings. And then for that last ring that's near the blade, what you're going to do is take a hot glue gun and glue that all on so that it doesn't keep rolling off and then you can color it all up and then you should end up with a sword looking like this for this step we are going to be marking 5 sixteenths of an inch from both ends of the cap so that we can take out our dremel and slightly cut into the pvc cap but remember to not cut all the way through because we're making detailed lines not shortening the cap but once you're done it should look a little something like this and then we can continue with our next step for our final step, we're just going to draw in our Deadpool logo with our Sharpies and then color the rest of the cap silver. And once you're done with that, we just slap it on the end of our sword and then you got a complete sword. And now we pose for the camera. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a lot about making these swords, because I love them, and I hope you do too. And when you finish, please share it with me. I would love to see it, and I would like to see if my tutorial actually helped. 
And if you have any questions or even suggestions on the build or even my videos, uh, please let me know. I'd love to hear them or answer your questions. And also, if you're wondering how I made my Deadpool mask, I will also be making a tutorial video for that. So please be on the lookout for that. Uh, it will be coming sometime soon. Don't know when, but it will be there. Good luck on your build, and see ya.